Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Mondays with Maishi. It is now Monday night, September 4th, 2023. We are deep into our hundreds of episodes. Maybe I'm going to guess about 125 at this point, um, but probably more. And um, in in light of that, um, I decided to go a little exciting and a little off the beaten path and out, deviate from our norm. Um, and in fact, I even invited uh, people outside the mental health profession to join tonight, although I don't see any just as of yet joining in so far. We're all mental health professionals. So I want to welcome everybody back. I know we took a break last week, which was quite refreshing and wor- worthwhile. And I do want to give a special shout out and a thank you to Menachem Stolberger for connecting me with tonight's very lovely and wonderful presenter, Sharon Savitson of San Diego, San Diego, California. Um, formerly, I think a native of San Francisco, you'll hear from the accent. It sounds kind of more like a San Francisco accent than a San Diego accent. Sharon, thank you for joining us tonight and gracing us with our, our, your presence. I'm and, very um, honored to be here. Yes, quite San Franciscan sounding. Okay, tonight's topic is actually the topic of the process of energy healing, which to many of us, including myself, have no idea what that means, um, but only for about the next hour or hour and a half. Um, by the time uh, 10, 15, 10, 30 comes around here on the East Coast, um, it's still very early in San Diego. You can see through the window, the sun shining. So I know that Sharon has a lot more time to be on this call than we do. So um Hopefully, we'll be able to take advantage of, of the light hours out there in San Diego. And Menachem, I think you're in, not San Francisco, I'm sorry, Los Angeles. You are from Los Angeles, not not San Francisco. Um, and that's where the connection was. So without further ado, let me introduce Sharon. And Sharon, tell us a little bit about who you are before we even talk about what energy means and what energy is, because I have some questions about that. But tell us who you are, how you... Uh, fell sort of fell into this world of energy healing and how uh, heebie-jeebie is this really? You know, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'd love to. So let me start off by telling you, and Menachem, thank you, that my mother was born in China and that my great-grandfather was a Kabbalah rabbi and his brother was put in jail for being an alchemist. So It's kind of in my blood, I think. My grandparents were yoga teachers in Israel. My aunt was an astrologer. My grandmother read part, you know, all of that. I kind of feel like when people would say to me, how do you know something? I would say, I just know. I don't know. I just know. Mm -hmm. And so we were raised with things like my mother would take us to see a hypnotherapist or Uri Geller who bent spoons. And she would introduce us to positive thinking so we kind of we we were always talking about this kind of energy way back then and it was very alternate then you know I mean people still think I'm weird but they really thought I was weird back then um fast forward I I started off my my college doing um social work And I just decided I was way too much of an empath to actually go through with it. There was no way I could work with this target audience. So I got a BA in psychology and then went into business. And one of the people, one of my bosses that I worked for, I was in advertising. She was weirder than I was. She she introduced me to energy healers then. Um, So I was exposed to people. I had a sore knee. I had this person work on me. They helped me with my knee and I, you know, kind of, made a little check mark and said, I think I'm going to be doing this later in life. Like I'm kind of just going to shelve it for now. One of the things that she did too, was she had, she had gotten this perp and this, so this, I was born in South Africa. So this is all South Africa. And you can imagine South Africans are also very, you know, pretty conservative. So this boss of mine had, had bought this purple plate from America and she had gluten intolerance. And we're talking back in, 85, 80, 83, 85. And she would take her bread and she would put it on this purple plate and she would then eat the bread and she would be absolutely fine. So 
that was kind of my exposure to all of these different things. Anyway, I moved to um, America in 92 and I became a preschool teacher. And then I started to be exposed to all of these different modalities. And slowly but surely, I became a Reiki master in 2001. I then found hypnotherapy. I then did neuro-linguistic programming. And I just continued to add and gather um, pranic healing, all of these modalities, because I just found them absolutely fascinating. And they worked in my practice. People were just fascinated with them. And so I did a combination. And I'm also a, um, a certified PCC International Coaches Federation, ICF certified coach. So that's kind of the umbrella. Everything goes underneath the umbrella of this certification for coaching. So I can either do pure coaching and not introduce any of the other modalities that I do um, or bring in a combination, which is which is mostly what I do. Um, and when I met Menachem, I had been literally gifted this opportunity at a teenage rehab center to come in and work with these kids in this dual diagnosis facility. And it was just incredible to me how I would take crystals um, and the kids, not even knowing what they were, were just so responsive to these alternative methods, whether it was crystals or whether it was um, Reiki or whether it was past life regression, whatever it was, they were just very, very receptive. And so fast forward all of these years, I've been doing all of these modalities and I just keep adding just because I find, I just find the information and I find it's fascinating. And I also feel that it really works with my clients. Hmm. Amazing. Incredible. So I know you said that your mom was born in China and, um, uh, you know, I was doubting that, but now after hearing you speak for a few minutes, I'm, I'm pretty sure you were speaking Chinese. You said words like Reiki pranic healing, crystals, NLP. And so I'm hoping to learn a little bit of Chinese tonight, if that's okay. Uh, Absolutely. You, okay, to ask you some questions on on uh, these modalities. Uh, before we get into some of the specifics, Sharon, um, I think the first, you, you know, the first thing, again, there's practitioners on here who are mostly mental health practitioners um, learning things such as... Um, you know, psychotherapy related. So either psychodynamic, analytic, um, or cognitive behavioral or behavioral or somatic. But um, the word energy itself in the form of healing is is sort of mystical sounding and certainly mysterious to me. Now, I, I will say that, you know, I consider myself a very spiritual person. And I do believe that there's things that happen beyond what the naked eye could see. Um, and beyond what x-rays can see as well. So I, I recognize and I acknowledge that there are things that happen in the world that we see, you know, for those of us who are believers who are Talmudic scholars, you know, we know that this, there's a lot of literature on this, um, but even without it, I can sort of feel it in my bones. I was always very intuitive. And I feel that intuition itself uh, um, is picking up on a lot of, again, nonverbal information that's out there um, in the environment. You know, and I, I again, without having ever been exposed, formally exposed to what energy is, would it be reasonable or fair to say that that is a form of energy? Intuition, sensing Absolutely. is a form of a form of energy. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Is there a broader is there a broader definition when when we talk about energy of what that means? So I'm going to start off with the not so woo woo stuff, if that's okay with you. For sure. So I do, I'm, I'm a, I have a master's certification in something called ELI, which is an energy leadership index. And what it is, is it talks about positive and negative energy. And it talks about how positive energy is uplifting and healing. And it talks about how negative energy is, you know, causes stress and causes disease in our body. And this assessment, it's unlike any other assessment that's out there, it is not a personality assessment. What it assesses is your level of um, leadership or your, your level of energy, either catabolic or anabolic, no matter where you are. And, and it says that you are always leading, right? You're Even if you're leading yourself, you are a leader. So what kind of a leader are you? 
And there's seven levels of energy. The two bottom ones are what they call catabolic and negative. So you've got um, level one is anger, um, level one is victim, level two is anger. It, it, it's broader than this. I'm just giving you like very, very basic um, to just show you. And then I'll take it deeper into the healing. Um, you've got level three is kind of reconciliation, which is starting to get into the positive levels. Level four is about caregiving. Level five is win-win. So how do you win in any situation? And then level six taps into kind of the more spiritual, you know, what's the spiritual meaning of this? Why is this happening? And then level seven is just being in a place of, you know, there's no reality, kind of everything's an illusion. So you coach to these different levels and what they, so that is really at a level where you're not even talking about anything that is alternate. It's not weird. You can have somebody in front of you that doesn't believe anything. And then you give them an assessment and you can find out how they behave in circumstances where there's stress. What is their profile under stress? And then what is their profile when they're not under stress? right and so and then you work through the levels of energy like so typically what you'll see is when someone's in a situation that's stressful to them you'll see a lot of level one or a lot of level two now that might be a person who in a situation where they're not stressed you'll see a lot of level six where they really tap into their connection to say god or into so, so are you saying each person is on a spectrum depending on circumstance but but all the levels could coexist or not coexist at the same time, but everyone has all levels. Everyone has all of them. The nice thing about this is it's not like a personality assessment, which is saying that's your personality. This is you you have a lot of level one when you're in a stressful situation, but you've got a lot of level five or level six when you're fine. How do we work more towards that level five and level six? Right. Sometimes now, when you said when you said you can see when someone is in that state or something how do you see that is that something that's so that is the specific assessment there's actually a test that you there's an assessment like you would take the briggs my myers briggs what or any of those other personality tests or right you take an assessment and then it shows you what the profile is that you can see now so you can use that okay mm -hmm. So that's a lot of the energy and you'll see the, the levels corresponding to, it could even be like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? So, so I'm going to now step a little bit, any questions around that? Cause then I'm going to step into the woo woo cause it kind of let's, moves let's, into let's take, it. Let's take a, so let's take a break for a second. Um, I do want to encourage anyone who can to please turn on your videos as I do every week. Um, it makes it much more personal and we get to see people and we get to see reactions and read faces. And now, of course, assess your energy levels. Um, so please turn on your cameras and you may have some uh, magic done on you while you're not looking. Okay, uh, that's number one. The other thing is, of course, I do want to mention our sponsors. Um, we are now sponsored by OKClarity.com as well as ShifiLieberman.com. That's S H I F I. Lieberman.com. Shifty Lieberman is about social skills, social skills made simple. And you do want to probably sign up to her newsletter, weekly newsletter that is free. And you can get great tips on social skills for children and for parents of children who can benefit from that. And okclarity.com is the only Jewish based website that features therapists who service the Jewish community, the firm community in New York, New Jersey, California, and the world. So you do want to take a look if you're a mental health professional, you can sign up to their WhatsApp status, or you could go on okclarity.com and create your own profile and your own website. They will do all the marketing for you and you just have your profile there. They kind of host it and you can be seen by um, anyone in your region who's looking for a therapist who's like you, who specializes in something that they're looking for. So go to okclarity.com, go to shiffylieberman.com and um, take a look. They're really great resources. Um, I also want to encourage everybody because this really is beyond my pay grade, what Sharon is discussing tonight. There may be many, many of you who are more familiar with um, these energy uh, uh, terms, terminologies, and the, the lexicon that, again, seems to be Chinese to me. So please, I'm encouraging everyone to raise your hand. Sharon doesn't seem very intimidated. Uh, she th I think she'll take the question and respond in kind. So please, raise your hand using the reactions tab 
on the bottom right of the screen and I will unmute you and you can ask your question or speak your comment. So please, no, don't be bashful. Okay, sorry about that. So we have these seven levels. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the energetic body. Okay, and so and so just to go back to that is, what I love about it is when you can, when any problem that you have, you can look at from the seven levels. You can say level one would operate this way. Level two would operate this way. And so you can always look at it. So once you've already done that, you can never unsee it. You're always kind of reflecting going, okay, what level, what level am I operating at? And then how do I move up to the next level? Or how do I even jump a few levels, right? How do I go straight to level five or six or whatever it is? Okay, so let's just put that aside. So from the more energetic perspective of the body, can you see this? Uh, kind of. Okay, yeah. so we have, um, for the purposes of this, I'm going to say we have seven what we call chakras, which are energy centers in the body, okay? We have more than that, but just for now, the, the basics are that each of these energy centers has a specific function. And so you may say that level one, it corresponds to the root chakra, which is about the basic needs being met, et cetera. And then your organs also hold on to specific energy. So, and hold on to specific emotions. So like you'd say, like the liver holds on to anger. Okay. I'm sure you're all familiar with acupuncture, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've at least heard what sure. acupuncture is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause acupuncture is, you know, well, well known. What acupuncture does is acupuncture works with, the chakras, but it also works with these systems in the body called the meridians. And it says that there's an energy flow that's in the body. So if you've got inflammation somewhere, what acupuncture does is that they put the pin in and then either they'll reduce the energy flow so that it lowers the flow or they'll increase the energy flow based on what's needed in the body. So the energy healing, and I'll go to the different modalities in a moment. The well, energy I, healing, but Sharon, I want to understand the, 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 the um, definition of energy flow. What exactly? So, we be, so what energy is, is it's life force, right? When you go outside and you stand in the sun, have you ever like walked in, you stand outside and you just go, oh, this feels so good, right? Because you're feeling the flow of the energy of the sun okay so mm -hmm. the modalities are using the life force so even breath or you go to the ocean and you smell the ocean now let me ask you something from the flip side of that how many of you have walked into a room and you just go oh, i i don't feel great here this doesn't feel good right or you have somebody in front of you, let's say I'm speaking, you're thinking, mm, I don't I don't like her energy. I don't like her vibe. I don't like her. I don't like the way she's interacting. That is all energy. It's an exchange of this energy, right? So really that's what it is. And, you know, I tell so many stories about how I'll be standing somewhere and an animal will just come to me and they'll actually position themselves. Maybe it's their, their leg that they'll position close to me and I'll put my hand on the animal and the owner will go, that's weird. My dog's been having problems with their hip or their leg or whatever, right? Or I'll go out into the world and maybe I'm not having such a great day. I don't always have great days and I'll watch myself and I'll think, okay, your energy is not great. But the minute I shift my energy, I will have somebody wanting to talk to me and engage me. And so it's just, a, it's, it's an interaction of vibration, right? So, so, so have you ever been in front of even your child? You just look at your child and you can just feel that something's off with your child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's energy. And so, so, so how is it different than what we would call intuition, sensing, tension in other words when you say if i shift my energy i'm sort of interpreting that in my mind as suppose i'm feeling very tense i become mindful of my tension i let go of it and now i feel calm so i shifted my energy from a tense energy to a relaxed energy 
it probably shifts some some level of vibration or is that was that what you mean just all a, of it is yes it absolutely is right so it is it's the combination of of even feeling it in your body and then allowing it to be released from your body so what i'm doing with the different modalities is that i'm just using i am intentionally and specifically shifting the energy or having the client shift the energy within themselves in order to change the vibration right okay so so well, so you, right now you just said a really important statement i think what what you're saying is that the work here is to shift the energy within the client or the patient. Yes. Now, I'm assuming that in order to be able to do that, you have to be attuned to their energy. You have to be on their yes. frequency so you can sense what's going on for them. And then how would you how, how would you shift that energy? Would you have to shift your own energy and their energy shifts? Or is there a different way to create a shift of energy? Well, so I will tell you this, and this is just, this is me. I'm not saying this is just what I've noticed in the 20 years that I've been doing this. When I, if I go in with an energy that is not a great energy, I don't get the same, necessarily get the same results that when I am in a higher vibration. So I don't think that it's me that's doing the work. I truly believe that I am just the vessel and that I, I'm, blessed enough to be chosen to be the one that just downloads whatever is supposed to be downloaded. And, and I know that when I go into a session where I have an expectation of outcome, I do not have the same kind of results that I do when I go in just trusting that whatever is going, whatever this client needs is what's going to come to me in order for me to facilitate it. But again, given the way that I work with everything, you know, very often I have the answer, like I already know what's going to come up. And the, and then I'll say to the client, what's coming up for you? And the client then tells me exactly what is coming up for them. And it's exactly the same thing, okay. right? But that's intuition. So that is me allowing the intuition to come in, or I'll put my hand somewhere and the client will say, how do you know that that's where the pain is? And I go, I don't know. I just know. Right. So, so I, I want to belabor this a little bit because I'm trying to put this into terms that I myself can, can relate to um, rather than hearing it, sim you know, just simply in abstract terms. Okay. So, so um, uh, pardon me and, and allow me to indulge, no. allow me to indulge Please. in this. And then we might Absolutely. have to, have, we might have to have a part two at some point if this takes too long. I, I'm, I'm thinking of myself. I, again, I consider myself quite an intuitive person. And um, I know I could. I'm going to give you a variation of observations of myself during therapy sessions. One variation might be where there are there's a client with whom I feel very connected, okay, versus a client with whom I feel uh, annoyed. Let's just say, okay, or disconnected from, or like we're on a different wavelength. They're saying things I'm not connecting to it, etc. That's one variation. Another variation would be that there are times with where I sense within myself a, a very peaceful, calm, content, serene experience. And during that experience, I can attune myself better with my client's experience or touch my client's experience better, okay? A third variation is um, not necessarily either one of the above, but um, there can be moments um, or how would you say it? You know, I guess moments or periods of trance that I feel within myself while I'm engaged with a client. So it could be a client who's just um, describing something very vividly or um, sitting in their emotions very powerfully in which I feel deeply connected and attached and attuned. Now, uh, I can, uh, during those moments, I can finish the client's sentence or I can fill in the gap or the word that they're looking for, um, or I can even describe what it is that they're feeling before they, they describe mm -hmm. it. Right. Um, and if I want to take that even further, I can often, uh, um, influence what's, what they're experiencing because we're so entranced 
that I can influence it either by saying something or by doing something or by changing my fate, my own facial expression, because mm-hmm. I feel that there's a mirroring process that's, that's Absolutely. inherently happening within the context of our interpersonal vibes. Okay. Absolutely. So I, I'm wondering when this is happening, am I essentially doing energy work? Am I influencing the client by being just deeply entranced, deeply attuned, and then mirror, you know, being the mirror of that person influencing them? You have a you have a vibration that is a vibration that's matching. That's what happens. So I'm just taking it a little bit beyond that, which is saying, even when you're out in the world, we attract where we vibrate. So to go to the client, so, so let's just take the example of the client that you're irritated with. Okay. Which never happens, by the way, I'm just saying. No, but but you know, sometimes, you know, I, I don't know with myself, I'll get a client and initially I might think, oh, okay, this client's maybe um, resistant. This client's, let's say this client's resistant. So instead of going into fear, which I don't. So what I'll do is I'll then energetically like send love to the client. I'll use the tools of, using color or frequency or specific music, maybe that's the difference between what you might do. So of course, facial and all of that and body language is is huge, right? Tone, pitch, all of that. Even even relaxing myself will put the client. Absolutely. So the mirroring. Right. Absolutely. But I may do a little bit more than that. I may do an exercise where I'll, have them listen to music, a certain frequency of music. And then while they're doing that, I'll actually do some Reiki on them. Okay. Reiki, will... Reiki right now for us is still Chinese. Okay. So there are a whole lot of different modalities that people use. Um, and the ones that I used just came to me. It wasn't like I was going looking for them because when I walked into a crystal store, which I happened to just love the stones, there was a, someone who said, you need to be a Reiki master. And I said, okay, I don't even know what Reiki is. And I became a Reiki master because so the, so the, so the modalities found me. So Reiki specifically is a form of energy healing, which is uni, use, using universal life force. We believe that it's coming from the universe and you, you're just taking this energy and now you're directing the energy specifically, Right. And Reiki specifically uses symbols. There are specific symbols that you use and you get attuned to it. Now, anybody can use the symbols, but a Reiki master is attuned. You, It's kind of like you get, your body gets attuned with a specific ceremony in order for you to be able to do the healing. So that's Reiki. Okay. And you can do hands-on Reiki. You're actually going to each of the of the chakras and you are sending the energy and the specific symbols and each of the symbols has a specific purpose. So you've got one symbol that's specifically for power. If you have somebody that is not feeling great and they, they're feeling maybe a little bit stuck or they're feeling they've got low self-worth, then you would focus on that specific symbol in order to bring that energy that that specific symbol has into the body and when you say a symbol what do you mean by a symbol it's a it's a drawing so let's say uh, let's say it was this but it's not okay i mean i work with with the star of david i also work with with it in 3d which is the macabre but let's say for argument's sake because the symbols are they're actually supposed to be secret they're not but like one of the symbols is so this let's say chakra is the symbol for power but let's say it was the star of david so you are imagining or drawing the, the symbol into the client's energetic body with the intention that that is going to have the effect that you are intending to have the effect on that client. And what, what's the significance of the symbol? Like who, who, cre- who made the symbol? So this was developed by or, or downloaded. It wasn't developed by the, a Dr. Usui, who was originally from Japan. And he went to sit and wait for the download because he wanted to know what what the, the the benefit of healing could be. And on the last day of 
21 days. He spent 21 days, like basically in the wilderness, just waiting to get downloaded. Um, on the 21st day, he was struck by lightning and he was knocked down, knocked unconscious. And as he became conscious, he started to see these symbols in his mind and what the symbols meant. And so he created this, this modality, of Reiki, and then he went out and he taught people how to use it. Um, so it's been around for, for a long time. And so, 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 okay, so Reiki is, so, the, so you're using these symbols to shift the energy in the body. Now you've got symbols for blockages. You've got symbols for past life trauma. You've got a symbol for um, enlightenment. You've got a, each of the symbols has a specific, has a specific property of what you use. You use them in combination, right? Or you can use just one on its own. So I very rarely do a full Reiki session just with Reiki because I have other things that I bring into the session. So let's say for argument's sake, I so I also use pranic healing. Now, prana is life force. You know, I'm sure you've heard of Qigong and all of, you know, where it's moving the energy. It's a whole, it's, it's, it's exercises that move the energy. But where pranic healing is different is, just to go back to Reiki, so First of all, you invoke, you always want to ask a higher power, God or whatever, to, to work through you. And Reiki will go where it's needed. So while you can say, okay, I'm going to use the specific symbol, you also have the intention that the body knows what to do with the energy and that the body will take that energy and it will use it where it needs to go to. Right? So you're the facilitator of... Because all of this is just about helping the body to self-heal. I mean, we cut ourselves and the body self, our bodies are phenomenal, right? So Reiki, you, you, you admit it, you use the symbols, but you also trust that the energy is going to go where it needs to go. So, so now, okay, look, can, can I just understand that for a second? The symbols that I'm hearing are something that were man-made, meaning they were, somebody was supposedly struck by lightning and had vision and downloaded. Well, I don't know what yeah. downloaded downloaded means. That's he what got I an hear. he got an image. He, he an image popped into his head and said. So that sounds almost like a prof, like like somebody saying that he had a prophecy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my my understanding is that that um, uh, you know, many people would consider that a form of idolatry or a form of uh, of, you know, somebody self proclaimed prophecy, uh, and and I understand that that's re been rejected by by many, you know, in terms of the symbols. But if you're talking about without the symbols, you're saying that that there's, I just, again, I want to understand, there's energy that's that's um, sort of universal, I think was the word you used, right? And that energy is there and it's, and we have to uh, tap into it or find it. Um, that, that sounds, that sounds reasonable to me. And, you know, even in my, my non- uh, mystical mind or maybe yes. in my mystical mind it sounds reasonable there yes. are there is energy yes. like you gave the example of yes. the sun giving off energy and there's energy and we want to um basically create a pipe you know to to and to yes. channel that energy properly so yes. what, what exactly the how exactly are we influencing the energy on the client again putting aside the symbols right but how are we influencing that energy on the client if i were to be a, a, a energy healer how are we influencing that? Or I don't know if I'm using the right words. So first of all, there's got to be an exchange. There's got to be an, a buy-in, right? So the client, there's got to be that that buy-in, whether it's with therapy, whether it's with energy healing, whatever it is. And My again, understanding is because if there is if there isn't buy-in, then there's going to be pushback and resistance. And then, of course, they're not allowing things to flow right. and work. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. But take just, just take the element of not even the symbols, right? Because I'll just use the Star of David. Um when I lay my hands on somebody, they can feel the heat coming from my hands. Okay. And so forget about the symbol. You're just feeling the energy of the, the, the heat of the energy. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you're drawing it in. You're drawing from the universe. You're drawing it in from the universe. I'm not saying. But the, that the means one. the practitioner has to be drawing it in, right? 
practitioner is the one that's doing it. And also the intention is, is that the client will self-heal. That's what you're doing. You're not saying I'm healing you. You're saying together what we're doing is we're creating a space for you to heal and for you to be able to have access to the information that your body needs in order to heal. Okay. That's the intention. So intention is really important then. Uh, yeah. Intention is really it's almost, important. It's, I mean, almost, same as it's almost like if you're, if you're thinking of something and you're, um, I'm trying to put this into words, but it's a very hard, it's just very, it sort of transcends words. Uh, if you if you're thinking of something and uh, attuning to it, then then you're generating or absorbing its energy, and that can influence the other person. Yes, yes. So even beyond that, think about and I do a lot of work with this when I work with parents and when they are having challenges with their children, or even when I work with couples, right? And I'm I'm working with relationships is the thing that I'll say to them is you have to shift your energy because when you shift your energy, that person's energy is going to shift. And it's amazing how it does. If you are setting the intention, my kid is crazy, my kid's never going to amount to anything, my kid's going to fail at everything, you are putting that energy, like it's almost like you're blowing smoke into a bubble around this kid where there's just nothing positive going into it. But when you shift it and you do it positively, the vibration changes. You know, I always tell the story of when one day, and my kids were little, my son was little when he said this to me. I had just gotten off a phone call and it was not a good phone call. And he said to me, mommy, are you mad? And I said, no. And he said, but your body and your words are saying different things. And he was saying, your energy's off. Mm -hmm. well, that right? I can, that I, again, that I can understand, you know, uh, right. reading and feeling emotions of another person is completely uh, uh so the work is to remove the negative energy right you'll see friends or clients that walk around mm -hmm. and they're doing this and people will say to them what are you doing and they say i'm getting rid of the negative thoughts and the negative energy in my body i want to right. rid my body of that negative energy right. so, so that my so Sharon, how would this be different, uh, just in a you know, very technical, um, if you told somebody who is looking grumpy to smile and think a positive thought, let's just say. So over there, you're shifting you're shifting energy by, by them doing it. Again, if they buy in and they're doing this in earnest, then yeah. they, they are shifting their energy. Yeah. Isn't that a simple form of energy shifting? What's Why would we um, do something so mystical if you can do the same thing in a very technical, simplistic form. So yeah, let me let me show you some things. And these are the things that, um, but let's go back to the rehab. Let's go back to the rehab when you're dealing with these children who don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're oppositional, right? They don't want to be there. So when you sit with somebody and you say, just be happy, well, they don't want to be happy. And mm -hmm. so you can't sit there and say to them, just be happy. Mm -hmm. So I... So let's move on to another thing that I do, which I have these crystals that were programmed specifically for me to use, right? I won't get into how they were programmed. It doesn't really matter. But I take- I'm the assuming they were, they were downloaded. They were downloaded. <laughs> Even if I take a stone, which and, and this happens to be rose quartz, which the property of rose quartz is supposed to be self-love. Now- to be honest with you, I'm not attached to any of this because I say, even if it's placebo, I'm going to take it because the, the placebo has been phenomenal in my business. So I go to the rehab and I give the kids a stone and now they don't want to talk. But now suddenly they're just holding the stone and for what, whether they like the color of the stone, whether they are comfortable with the energy of me just not talking and not forcing them to do anything, it doesn't really matter. But now you're starting to get a shift instead of saying to the person, you need to be happy because that's what's going to move you forward. Now you're just giving them something that's going to calm them and it's going to move them forward. Right? And then you can get a desired effect. So for me, it's a combination of what I feel needs to happen at that moment. Right? So the stones have different properties, but 
it doesn't matter. Like I, I used a lot of amethyst in the rehab because amethyst is about calming. So this property, the, the purple transmutes negative energy, but amethyst is a calming stone. So you'll have them maybe walking around and just believing that this is going to make a difference to them. It's just going to, it's just, it's a reminder. It's an anchor, right? It's an anchor. That's all it is. Here's an anchor. Instead of you remembering what it feels like, now you've just got an anchor and it could be anything. So I'll move on to pranic healing because pranic's a little different. In fact, it's a lot different. Pranic was developed by um, a guy in um, the Philippines, um, Dr. Choa Kuksui. And what he did was he worked with intuitives to basically formulate this, this, this whole method of healing by what they saw. Now, I don't know. I just know that, that what a lot of it works Every single protocol, every single ailment has a specific protocol. There is, there's no way I can even tell you. If, if you've got a headache and I'm going to help you with your headache or I'm going to try to help you with your headache, I go to the page where it says headache and then I open the page and I follow the protocol. And I love the story about there was, there was a guy who was actually an engineer and his wife fell and she broke her leg and the doctor said it was going to take maybe six months for her to heal her leg and he happened to find this this guy and he did the protocol and I think she the the leg healed maybe in weeks or, or a month or whatever it was and he he wasn't he just followed the protocol now you've got some of the things you have to be more advanced some of them you can literally go okay it says sweep so now I'm just cleaning so we have a physical body and then we believe that you have an energetic body, right? So there's, there's kind of a, an, an energy field. When you stand next to somebody and you're feeling their vibration, you're not touching them and going, okay, well, you don't feel so good. You're feeling the energetic body of what's in their, in their energy field. So he's clearing the energy field and then he's working on a very specific chakra or chakras or organs or the blood in order to um, get the result for that specific headache. Now, now can right? they do this with their eyes closed? Can they also feel energy with their eyes closed or only with their eyes open? So I have always had my clients close their eyes. No, no, you, for you. Would you need, would you be able to feel my energy with your eyes closed? Absolutely. I, I, often I'll be doing the sessions with my eyes closed because, because I'll get downloaded of what it is so that I'm tapping out of what I'm, what I'm seeing. Well, so let me tell you this. I had so some of my male clients, I do Zoom for most of my clients, but some of the male clients prefer to just do phone calls. So I was on a phone call with a client and I said to him, sit up straight. And he said to me, how do you know that I'm not sitting up straight? And I said, I can feel your energy. I could just feel the vibration of what it was and that he was not sitting up straight. When you say vibration, what do you mean by that word? Can do you mean no, do you just mean that you can tell? You can sense. I can just tell. No, you don't mean actual tell. vibration, like you're tuning into a vibration. You you're just using that colloquially. So yes. So it's not like but it's tone, it's pitch, mm -hmm. it's pace. Well, that's why I'm asking if you could do it with your eyes closed, or do you need yes. to do you no. need to sense and be able to see the person to be able to no. experience what's going on? No. no. You do need to be able to hear them. Um, I can get a feeling about something and I'll call somebody and say to them, what's going on with you? And they'll go, how do you know that? And, and it happens often to me. Mm -hmm. How do you know that I needed you today? Or something will pop into somebody will pop into my head and I'm, sh I'm <laughs> sure we all have the ability to do this yeah. I'm not I'm not special I just love it and so I chose to get certified in it but we all have this ability but right? does this so training does this do, when you train in this do you actually train to become more attuned I think each of these trainings have helped me to to tap into something higher than myself um, there's some protocols that you'd need to not do. You know, you wouldn't have a sunburn and then put 
boiling water onto the sunburn. So it's the same thing with, 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 with the energy. You won't use red if something's inflamed. You don't use the color red. So the things that you need to know. But if you just have somebody that just has the intention to be healing something, your child comes to you and says, I hurt myself. And you go, oh, let me put my hand there. Or let me give you a kiss. Right? That's healing energy. We all have the ability. When I say to a client who's eight, when you've got a stomach ache, I want you to imagine that you've got magic in your hand and then you put your hand on your stomach and then that's going to heal you. And then she does. And she tells me how often she uses it and how it helps her when, when she's got anxiety. We all have it inside of ourselves to be able to do the healing. Yes. Okay, let's take a question for Malka. Hi. Hi. Uh, so I, I'm finding what you're saying really fascinating. Um, no I'm, question about, no question. Raise your hand if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a very, very um, intuitive person. Um, like I'll just like be thinking about somebody, you know, in a in, in another place, another state, another country, and, and they'll it's call. Almost, it's almost what? And they'll suddenly call you. Yeah, just you know that that sort of thing, or mm -hmm. or I'll or even more often I'll feel something and I'll reach out. Um, but I'm wondering how with our clients we can become more attuned to their energy field. Okay, I do want to get to that. I do, and and this, and I want to talk about the practitioners and the energy and what happens with your clients and taking on the energy and everything. So. I, I I will yes, and, and I Sharon, will do it. Uh, you, you promised us a role play. I forgot. You promised a uh, a demo. We're we gonna have time for that. I'll make sure we have time. <laughs> okay, but I do want to say something. So recently, I decided I wanted to be on podcasts. So I used to be on a radio show years ago, and what happened with that radio show was I thought to myself, "Oh, I want to do voiceovers." And within a week, I was on my friend's radio show. I I, I didn't even think about it. It just happened. So I decided I wanted to be on podcasts. I then get a phone call from somebody who I worked with, Menachem, and we worked with each other. We worked together years ago. I mean, we're talking more than seven, eight years ago, right? It's not like we are speaking to each other. And he said, do you want to be on, my, are you interested in being on my friend's podcast? So that's kind of what you, that is the energetic it's putting it out there energetically and then something comes in. That's, I think that that's just energy. Well, that's a very right? controversial concept because there's a concept called confirmation bias, right? And in confirmation bias, you know, we, you may have had the thought of being on someone's podcast a um, hundred thousand times over the past seven years, Yeah. but, but uh, now it suddenly became prominent because somebody, yeah. the, the, the idea became prominent. So yeah. there is confirmation bias, you know, that I yeah. think, I have a lot of stories like that, but I'm always open to saying I'm the first one that says I'm going to tell you that I'm skeptical, skeptical about everything. So I don't go in with this just, you know, blindly to it. I go, I'm going to tackle this from all different ways. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I want to tell you about the energy when you ask, can you feel the energy? Um, when my daughter was young and I started doing the crystal work, we would play this game where she would close her eyes. And I would take the crystal and I would not touch her, but I would say, okay, where am I, where is the crystal now? And she'd say, on my foot, on my stomach, right? And so I found that with even people, with, even with people that have not believed in this, that when I've done crystal work on them and I'll say, okay, they'll say, oh, I can feel that you're moving something around my body, or I can feel very specifically that you're working on this particular area and, and they're correct. Okay, questions? Can I carry on? Any other, any other questions? Uh, Malka, Malka, are you done? Or does anyone else want to ask? Go ahead. I want you to consider something. Oh, somebody had a question? No. No, um, I want you to consider something. When you walk into a room that's filled with smoke, when you walk out of the room, how often have you smelled your clothes or whatever it is and go, okay, my clothes smell of smoke. I need to go and wash my clothes. So when you have a client that comes in and that's dumping on you and everything else, 
do you have a practice that you are cleaning your energy or cutting or separating or doing anything that that basically closes that session or closes the energy or even walks in protecting yourself from from somebody's energy you know you're going to go somewhere and you know that someone has terrible energy or they're angry or whatever else do you protect yourself or do you separate yourself from them afterwards that's a great question i i think that there are times that yes preemptively if if i know that somebody's let's just for simplicity's sake say uh somebody's in a bad mood then uh rather than allowing that mood to affect me right i might say they're in a bad mood let let them be and if they are nasty or negative or whatnot let them be but don't be affected by it yeah and you can say okay so you're actually setting the intention to not be affected mm-hmm. okay so i have specific practices where i'll you know this is what I believe that when you engage with somebody, we kind of have a cord that connects us, the thin cord that kind of connects us. Or, you know, when you think, when somebody's thinking about you, they tap into you. So there's a cord that's connected. So a good practice is to just kind of cut the cords. They'll reconnect, even if it's with your kids or with loved ones, the cords will reconnect the minute you have an engagement with the person or you think about the person, but it's good to just clean the energy and have the separation because I'll tell you like for me what the way that I got to understand it was I would go somewhere and I'd come back and I would just be exhausted I would feel like I literally needed to get into bed because I was so exhausted and then came the understanding that people can drain you know how you say that person just drained right because they kind of take your energy especially if you are somebody who's upbeat People want to plug into it and they want to pull your energy. So there are practices that you can do um, that just separate that and so that you're not getting the smoke that's blocking your energy field or in your clothes. Um, Even if it's just the intention of I'm just going to separate, I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of clean myself of that, of that energy. So things like um, I'll use violet fire in my mind to clean space and um, I'll do it in between clients um, and it's just an intention right it's just imagining that there's a violet fire on the bottom of the floor and all it's doing is just cleansing the whole entire room um, I'll do it in people's houses when when stuff is going on um, I'll do salt baths and I'll tell my clients to do salt baths you just sit in a salt bath for Epsom salts or Himalayan salt for for 20 minutes and that gets rid of the it gets rid of the energy the negative energy in your body um even if you're showering just setting the intention that you are cleansing your body of any negativity of anything else that's been attached to you while you've engaged with people um i do use crystals i do use sage um that sounds a lot a lot like a lot of guided imagery or imagery i use a lot of guided imagery mm-hmm. a lot a lot a lot yeah and so I use a lot of imagery to me and I'll do a quick exercise I I have a three-step process that I work with and we can do that and maybe if there's time afterwards we can carry on talking so this is what I believe and this is my analogy if you have a vase of dirty flowers you are not going to take beautiful clean flowers and put them into the vase with the dirty flowers you're going to take the dirty flowers out you're going to clean the vase and then you're going to put the beautiful flowers in And that's how I feel about the work. I feel like we want to rid ourselves of what's not serving us, negative emotions, the thoughts, the the, the ailments that are now in our body, right? So we want to be doing the work that takes it out of our body and basically disassociates us from, from the thought or the experience or whatever else. We then want to clean the energetic body and clean the physical body and then we want to imprint what it is that we want right okay so that's the process that i would like to take you through and we can do it quickly i'll just give you a little bit of a taste of can what we? it is can yeah. we yes. okay everybody up for that we are good so i'm just going to set the intention and 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 bring in my supreme god that i believe in all my helpers 
but also to set the intention that you can't do this wrong. Whatever you're supposed to get, you'll get. Whatever's supposed to come up. And if nothing comes up, then nothing comes up. Don't try to do anything beyond. Just allow yourself to go with the flow and whatever happens, happens. Okay? Okay. So for the purposes of this exercise, what I want you to do is I want you to think of something that you would like to have different, something that's not working for you and something that you would like to have a different outcome. So it could be maybe you're dealing with a, a difficult relationship. Maybe it's a an ailment in your body. Whatever it is, what we're going to do is we're going to imagine or think about, you don't have to see, you can sense, you can however it comes up for you. We're going to imagine or sense or feel that there's a violet fire in front of us. Now, I use salt water when I work with my clients. So if I'm taking stuff out, I actually throw it into the salt water. But I don't think any of you have salt water in front of you. I do. So you're going to just imagine that there's a violet flame. And you're going to take anything that pops up for you that is attached to that, right? And you're going to imagine, you don't have to physically do it, but you can imagine that you're taking it out of your body wherever it is, whether it's a thought, a feeling, uh, an emotion, and you're going to take it and you're going to throw it into the violet flame. And anything that comes up that is attached to that, you may be surprised that things will come up going, oh, I didn't realize that this was attached to that and I'm throwing this away. So are we okay with that? Do I have a buy-in that that's what we're going to do? Okay, perfect. So I want you to go ahead and close your eyes or lower your eyes. Think about what it is that you want to get rid of. And don't sit in any of the emotions. So as it comes up, so I want you to take it and throw it. So I don't want you to associate and then go into a story about what or where it was. Just let it just come out, up and out, up and out, and just keep doing it. Keep going where you're taking it and you're throwing it. And if you think, well, I've got nothing else that I've got around this, dig a little deeper. If it keeps popping up the same thing, keep throwing the same thing. All right, go ahead and open your eyes. Now, when I'm working with a client, I can do this round seven times. Like I can do, I can do it over and over and over and over again. And just to tell you about something that I did a while back, I sat in meditation for some days, it was between two and four hours every day. And I threw away everything that came up for me from childhood. And I'm pretty old. So it, I had to like, we, I broke it into increments of it was a, it was a specific technique and they broke it into increments of five years of what happened when you were zero to five, like born to five and whatever, you, whatever it was that you were dealing with and going through all of the different things and just throwing and throwing and throwing and getting it all out of your body. Okay. So I'll do this multiple times. So the next part of this is what we want to do is we want to clean the energetic body, Right. So I'll sometimes use um, a chant um, or I'll use fre frequency music. Um, but for the purposes of today, what we're going to do is I want you to imagine or sense that you have a waterfall of violet water, brilliant violet light, and it's going to move through your body and just allow it to move through. And as it's going to move, just set the intention that it's going to clear whatever it needs to clear. That it's just going to like be like this blanket that's just moving all the way over your entire body, from your head, down your forehead, and then all the way down your cheeks. And it's just cleansing your body. And then all the way down your neck, into your shoulders, all the way down your arms, and out through your fingertips and your hands. And then all the way down your back your middle back and your lower back and it's just cleansing all the way down the front through all your organs your blood your bones your cells just cleansing every single part of you all the way down your hips your legs all the way down to your ankles your feet and then just releasing through the soles of your feet and out into the earth 
And let's just do a brilliant white light. So the same thing, you're going to take the white light and it's just moving all the way through your body, all the way down. Let it calm you, let it cleanse you, let it heal you. Just set that intention. Your body knows exactly what to do. It knows where it needs to go. Our bodies are amazing. And just let it go all the way down, out your hands, all the way down and out through your feet. And then go ahead and open your eyes. Okay. Now, we've taken the dirty flowers out, right? We could have plucked them out. We could have done anger. We could have done sadness. We could have done all of those things separately. But we just did whatever it was that came up. We've cleaned the body. And now we want to imprint what it is that we do want. And through the years and through all the time that I've done this, the one thing that I realized about the success of this, because I was brought up going, just positive think. Well, we know when the conscious and the subconscious are in conflict, you may not get the result that you want. Because if you have a thought that you want something and your subconscious is saying you can't get it, then you're not necessarily going to get that. So what I want you to do for this exercise is go ahead and close your eyes. And I want you to imagine that you've got a bubble of gold light and in this gold light that's around you that's where the manifesting is going to take place I want you to bring up what it would be like to have what you have how it would feel how whatever the scent I want you to use all of your senses to the best of your ability to raise that vibration to match as though you already have it Not you're going to have it. It's not in the future. It's here. You have it. Because our brain doesn't know the difference between perceived and real. So imagine that you already have it and bring that energy into your entire body that you are joyful or healed or, or happy, whatever it is, right? Calm. And bringing in all of the senses. Who's around you? What do you smell? What do you see? What do you feel? And just try to make it bigger and brighter. How would you stand? How would you speak? Bringing in that gold light. That golden energy. So you're associated. You're in your own body. You're seeing the world through your own eyes. You're engaging from this place. Make it bigger, brighter, and whenever you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Any comments? Any anybody want to share? They did it, they felt anything, it was terrible, it was wonderful. Any other questions? Come and get somebody to share your experience. I'll stop the recording if that helps. Anybody? If I stop the recording, it's private and it doesn't go beyond this. Would anybody volunteer? Go ahead, Tahia. Do you want me to stop the recording? I don't care. It's fine. Um, definitely with the release was like a almost a surge of energy, like a lightness and a zap, like a zip that really like a charge that, that happened with like that experience, the, you know, the sense of the experience. Yeah. Thank you. Rifka, would you, would you speak up? Leah, go ahead. So uh, it was very interesting. Uh, the violet light, it was like from a science fiction movie. I saw it like, you know, going down like a machine. 
I really felt it then. I was really surprised by how powerful the white light that really hit me. It was very strong. Uh, but I, I, I tend to visualize it. It's easy for me. But then I had a hard time with the gold bubble manifesting. I could, uh, I had a whole scene in my head of what I wanted, but I couldn't get it to be like gold. It was dark. I was trying to, I had the scene. It's like I see right. it on the screen, but the screen is dark. I couldn't get it to where I wanted, to that gold kind of brightness. So that may be, you know, then I would explore, is there some belief that that you don't feel like you can get it? And and mm -hmm. we're not always, you know, we, we're dealing with a 5% conscious mind. I mean, the subconscious mind is 95%. So then we're exploring, okay, um, what's happening here? Why are you not able to step into it? And And sometimes, and you know, um, occasionally I'll get a client that just says, I have, I, I can't, I can't feel it. So what I'll sometimes do is have them step into somebody else's body and, and imagine what they would be feeling in order to bring up that emotion and to be able to bring, to elevate that vibration. Right. But the work would be digging a little deeper about, about what is going on. And, and also remember when I'm doing this with a client, I'm also doing the energy work on them. And I'm also asking, are we at a place where we, where we feel like we're, we can move forward or, or is there more that needs to be released before we can move on? So. Um, may I ask, may I ask a question? Of course. What do you do if like a certain client puts me to like I'm not actually falling asleep but I get really really tired when I walk with them I actually like him quite a bit and I think we've been doing good work but it's really interesting either he misses the session or comes late because he fell asleep he stays up all night for his walk so I kind of have to wake him up and maybe it has something to do with that or he's there on time, but he's draining, he's like sapping the energy out of me. I need yes. to go to sleep after a session with him. So that's what I was talking about before. And that's when I would do things like um, wrap myself in a bubble. Now you want to make sure that when you wrap yourself, and you can use the white light, but your intention is, that goodness goes in and out because otherwise the client will feel the block that the they block. are not getting yeah. through to you. So you don't, you want to be careful that you're not blocking that energy, but you want to surround yourself in a bubble so that they are not draining your energy. Right. So what, kind, what kind of a bubble is that? I think that's why I'm having our time. How do I protect myself while that, also being uh, open to the client? You need to do it once. You can do it before the client walks in. You can do it in the morning. You can, all you have to do is set that intention that you are in a bubble. Okay. This, this is a, um, a clear quartz sphere that I use for healing, but basically it's this, right? Whatever works for you. I mean, I've had, I've had people use a, a purple coat. Uh, it can be anything, whatever it is that works for you. Let it, let your intuition tell you what do I think would be a protective thing for me? Like I'll put myself into the macarabala. Like, I don't know. What I'll, I, you know, I use this. I use a lot of the, it's a 3D star of David. So I'll put yourself into this. This is the protection thing. And then at the end of it, you want to be clearing the energy. You want to be washing your hands and intending that you're ridding yourself of the energy or even imagining that you've got the, the white light going through you or you've got the violet flame going through you or at the end of the day when you shower, you know, or you imagining that you're standing under a waterfall and the water's just cleaning you, any of those things. It's really important. And then cutting the cords. Just imagine that they're cords. Not that you don't, the cords will reattach. So you're cutting the cords, you're giving him back his cords, you taking back your cords so that oh. you're not carrying this draining effect you know, I was working somewhere and I would literally walk out at four o'clock and go, I am going and I'm getting into bed. I, I just, I am so exhausted. But the minute, like 10 minutes into my drive, I was 
absolutely fine because the energy was so toxic in that environment until I started to work on the environment and then everything turned around in the environment. But I had to actively work on the energy in the environment. Well, thank I you. Think all, I think all practitioners should be doing some. This is a form of self-care. Yeah, when you said call, that really resonated with me. I kind of saw almost like an electronic device and like, okay, we can connect the call <laughs> right before we start and then we can kind of disconnect it. Oh, uh, perfect. At the end of the session or something like that. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, we have some more, we have some more questions. Go ahead, Bacheva. Hi. So it's amazing to see. I think from doing that exercise, I realized that the more physical, like not so physical, it's mental, but the more like effort you put in, as opposed to just letting your mind think, you have to really concentrate in you know, what you were saying to let it go through, I realized how pain I usually feel in my legs suddenly was not there. So mm -hmm. an interesting question I'm thinking of with my work, I work with trauma. Um, I definitely have clients a lot of times with my processing of trauma through EMDR, inner child kind of mm -hmm. work. Um, many times they have to imagine different things that happen and different stories in their mind. I wonder if using a little more this kind of style, more physical does it work with more negative kind of thinking? Because here we're doing more positive. Yes, I do a lot of that, right? Take it out. Is it a color? Let it talk to you. Send it away. Um, have it engaged. Does it? If, if it stays, it needs to be positive. Can it be your ally? Does it need, Do we need to get rid of it completely? You're saying when That's we're processing the trauma, it wouldn't be detrimental to actually like put them more in like putting it into the room right now you know, more in this kind of feel we're getting. No. So, so because of the trauma and I do something else called timeline, um, I'll very often do timeline first, which is, it's, it's, it's such an abstract concept, but you go back along the timeline to the very first time your soul ever experienced, let's say anger. And you bring back the lesson without bringing back the emotion. So you don't want, want them to associate necessarily into the trauma. You want them to just bring back the lesson. And so you go through anger, sadness, fear, guilt. And so you're clearing it without them necessarily. I'll probably do a lot of that and then also do energy work so that by the time they get to the trauma, um, it's not so hard for them to be dealing with it or putting it behind the glass window where they disassociate it from it as opposed to being associated with it. Mm -hmm. Does that, Is that helpful? Does that yeah. make sense? Thank you so much. Yes. Fascinating. Thank you. Okay, we still have another question. Rifki, go ahead. Oh, you just muted again. There you go. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Sharon, for this wonderful and engaging. I I, I only got in for the last 20 minutes, but First of all, I want to really thank Moshe for doing these Mondays with Moshe because it's like I always have them stacked in my library and I know that I'm going to go back and visit them and he offers them so generously and I think it's a, a great, a great contribution to our community to learn about so many different things. I've actually done training in energy work and I am... I've, I've, I've had experiences with it on myself where, and, and I remember this, even while having a massage with energy healing, she was actually, she said that terminology that you use, she's taking out the flowers, the dead flowers. And I remember actually experiencing a very um, weird, like plucking and then a warm feeling so i i mean i wasn't able to experience it here on this i have to be in a different zone mm -hmm. but one of the things that i thought was so interesting and i just wanted a little bit more clarity on is that like when i was doing the energy healing i had the crystals and she was very emphatic as you are that when you and this could be helpful to all of us here on this um tonight is clearing the negative energy and not holding it because I do feel exhaustion sometimes. And, you know, sometimes, and, and a lot of the work I do, like now that I'm doing somatic and IFS and EMDR and body work, it's definitely less because 
you're not doing as much talking, you're letting the body heal and you you know, you don't have to. So I feel less exhausted, but I'm always concerned about the energies clinging to me, the bad energy and not being able to clear it. And I just wondered, I know she had said, just clear your, even if you take the crystal and clear your magnetic field. And then someone had told me to burn sage. So take it, epsom salt bath but like of all of these things is it just imagination of the intention cutting the cords or actually doing the you know there's so many different things i just mentioned and some that you did but you know just as a practical you know we're all in this and you know i've been wearing a crystal for a while too but it just so one of the reasons i didn't bring up the, the actually putting your the crystal I, I mean I have just so much information that I want to share with you about the crystals is you do want to be cleaning the crystals you do because the because you know jewelry holds on to energy clothes hold on to energy crystals hold on to energy so the crystals like in the full moon or the new the full moon you clean the crystals I know the, the Jews we work with the new moon I work with the new moon and the full moon but to just even have the intention that you are putting the crystals out on the full moon so that the crystals, crystals can be cleared. Now, I work with a pendulum um, and I program the pendulum to tell me, yes, no, is the, are the chakras open? Are they closed? I don't swear by the pendulum. I, I use it as a guide. You know, I'm always skeptical about everything. The one thing that I do use is selenite. Yes, selenite. Mm -hmm. is a great cleaner like I and I've tested it where I'll just start off saying okay uh, clients chakras are closed or the energy is bad I'm just going to use the selenite and straight away the the, the pendulum will change the, the the energies will be shifted just with the selenite that's so clear the energy of is that good enough to clear I have that on a wand and I was told just to clear the magnetic field with that so that the bad energy of your clients that you've seen don't stick to you because I know my my energy the person that I work with she said she stopped really working with so much crystals because she found it took a lot of time to keep cleaning them in between like she was trying to clear them of the bad energy and cleansing them right. but for right. ourselves and our purposes this cell unites that you yes. that good enough to yes okay yes and I want you to trust your intuition like I can say yes right now with a little bit of that's what's come up I wasn't even intending using the selenite so it it was meant to be here but I do want to say something else if you are sitting in fear that your clients are gonna that you are gonna keep taking your clients negative energy you're right and that's what has to change just the intention that the minute the client's gone that you're sending them love that you that you're clearing the space and spending more time with what you want as opposed to what you don't want Mm, nice okay that you want the positive to stay in the room you you want to move towards what you want not what you don't want because because that's what you'll get you will get because that's what you're affirming over and over again I don't want that but you kind of the don't gets negated and you get that wow okay right that's interesting so instead of thinking negative energy you want to think this I'm just setting the intention that the vibration in this office is amazing. I'm just going to throw the light around it in between clients. So I'm just going to send heart centeredness to it. Another phenomenal thing, and I didn't even get to talk about frequency music. I'm finding it, finding it so profound in my practice. And I've, I've always used music, but now I'm using specific frequency music. Go on YouTube and type in frequency for clearing negative energy. And um, actually my, my pranic healing teacher he says when he goes into a, into a hotel he just puts on the frequency and he just lets it play in the room you cannot believe it'll ch it changes the vibration so just put it on in between clients what is it called frequency for clearing frequency music. just put put in on youtube it's youtube and then just type in frequency music for like cleaning space beautiful that's a very nice idea. Thank you so much. Shana. And find one that resonates with you. The, the, you know, there there's so much on the internet. So find one that you love that talks to you. And is there something to the sage? I'm just curious because I just recently purchased and someone mentioned that that would be helpful to clear the energy in the room. Yes, the sage is just another tool, right? So you can okay. use the selenite. 
or you can use the sage, or you can do both. There's so many different things, but use what works. Just sit quietly and just trust that your subconscious will tell you what it is that will work for you. And you may just come across something that you've never even seen and go, oh, you know what? This works. Okay. Wow. So I want to thank you, Sharon. Uh, you know, perhaps this is just a pause until mm -hmm. next time. But this was so different and unique and uh, definitely needs a lot of processing, uh, some sage words and sage advice about sage and other things. Um, any any closing remarks? Is there anyone is there anywhere that anyone can find you? I know you have a website. If anybody's looking, you know, my website is not indicative of anything because I've all my clients are all from referral. Well, it's from my clients are from referral. I, I, I've, I've never got I have I think very seldom gotten a client from our website because everybody just refers their families to me oh, and their cousins okay. and their, everybody else. So you you can go and you can kind of see a little bit, but it's my name, Sharon Savitson, um, dot com. So you can go ahead and reach me there. Or, or they can reach out to me and I can reach forward out your to information. You and you can re yes, absolutely. Well, I want to really, and, really thank you for joining us and coming on and sharing all this. It, my pleasure. You seem very passionate about it, which means that yeah. it's near and dear. Um, and um, we're going to log off for tonight. We have some more exciting presenters. Next week is Martha Stark. And we're going to be talking about using language. Uh, she's a really, really a master on, on the language of psychotherapy. It's going to be a really fascinating show. I got some some sneak uh, uh, views of the PowerPoint that she's basing it off. It's really phenomenal. For those of you who know, she's written the book, Working with Resistance, a great book on resistance. Martha Stark, a Harvard professor. And um, I want to wish everybody good night. And of course, those of you who want to stay on for a couple of minutes.